Number 10, Bible John. Between the years of 1968 and 1969, the Barrowland Ballroom down south of Glasgow, Scotland became the chosen hunting grounds for an unknown serial killer, Bible John. A twisted man, the killer brutally raped and murdered three women after their nights out in the dance hall. The unknown killer, dubbed Bible John, earned his nickname after police heard him quoting from the Bible prior to the murder of one of his victims. His first victim, Patricia Docker, was lured into dancing with Bible John at the Barrowland Ballroom, and once the two of them were finished prancing around together, John got to work. After tricking her with an offer for a ride home, he forced himself onto her and eventually mercilessly strangled her to death. Once he was done having his way with her, he drove her nude, lifeless body out to the streets and chucked her in an alley less than 10 meters from her house. His second victim, Jemima McDonald, was found dead by her sister in the middle of an old abandoned building. Jemima had been raped, strangled, and beaten to death. In contrast to Patricia, Jemima's dignity was left intact as she was found with all of her clothes and possessions but her handbag was gone. John's third and final known victim, Helen Puttock, was pressed into leaving with him to go back to her flat, and Helen, obviously not sensing what kind of man Bible John truly was, foolishly fell for his murderous charm and killer looks. The next morning, Helen was found completely battered in the back garden of her flat with a deep bite mark on her upper leg. The contents of her handbag were scattered all around her like some sort of ritual, and her handbag, once again, was gone. At first, investigators were skeptical. Serial killers are very uncommon, especially in sparsely populated towns like Glasgow. They could all just be well-timed coincidences, right? Uh, unfortunately, that's wrong. All three murders shared similarities. All three women were raped, beaten, and strangled in similar fashions. The ligature marks on each victim's neck implied they had been strangled with a similar garret. All three women were menstruating at the time of their murder, and each had their handbag stolen. Police apprehended numerous suspects, but each were eventually ruled out. Today, the case remains unsolved, and even after brutally murdering three women, Bible John has yet to be brought to justice. Number 9. The Doodler The Doodler operated between the years of 1974 and 1975, and was a homophobe with a mission the eradication of all homosexuals in the Bay Area. That's a little bit tough because San Francisco has one of the most prominent and largest LGBT communities of all time, and I don't think getting rid of 14 gay men will cause those numbers to change much. The Doodler met up with his victims at gay nightclubs, bars, and restaurants. After wooing his victims into going with him to a discreet and inconspicuous location, he would stab them repeatedly in the chest and back then throw them into the water or in an alley somewhere, whichever was closer. He was given the pseudonym The Doodler, due to him having the habit of sketching his victims prior to murdering them. At the time of the killings, famous gay activist and politician Harvey Milk expressed his deepest sympathies to the families affected by the killings, and stated that he understood the feelings of the three survivors that refused to speak to the police about the doodler. Harvey also added that the three men likely feared outing themselves to their families as being homosexual, since in the 70s, being gay wasn't as widely accepted as it is today. Multiple fingerprints were found at the site of the murders, with one set being traced back to one man, who ended up becoming the prime suspect in the case. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, the three surviving victims of the doodler did not want to out themselves by testifying against him in court. Even though all the evidence pointed towards the prime suspect, he was never tried or convicted due to the survivor's refusal to appear in court. The 70s were a hard time for the gay community. The survivors would rather a murderer walk away scot-free than publicly come out as gay. Just let that sink in for a second. Number 8. The I-70 Killer The I-70 Killer earned his nickname after the area he operated, Interstate 70. The I-70 Killer had quite a habit for visiting stores along the Interstate 70 and killing young brunette girls. And that's only young brunettes, he allowed everyone else to live. In one of the cases, a young man walked into a store shortly after the I-70 Killer had murdered the woman inside, and the I-70 Killer just let the man go. The I-70 Killer ended up killing at least 6 people, each with the same features all between the ages of 24 to 40, and all were petite and brunette, except for one. During one of his sprees, the I-70 killer accidentally mistook a man for a woman and killed him too as the man wore a ponytail and had light brown hair. 
All six murders took place in 1992 and was classified as a murder spree by investigators. Most of the murders were carried out in almost the same fashion. The killer would walk into an empty store and distinctly spot out and shoot the brunette woman working the counter or cleaning up. All victims were alone and shot in the back of the head. The perpetrator of these horrendous crimes was never found and no suspects were ever taken in. As there was no information available and very little evidence, the case was eventually classified as a cold case and all investigations have ceased. Number seven, Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper, most likely one of, if not the most famous serial killer that was never caught, Jack operated within the eastern ends of London, in and around an area that went by the name of Whitechapel. Nearly all of Jack the Ripper's kills were carried out near the end of 1888 between the months of August and November. The masochist only targeted female prostitutes that sold themselves within the area of Whitechapel. Nearly all details regarding how he approached his victims or what kind of weapons he used to murder them are shrouded in mystery. But all of Jack's victims had the same pattern of murder, or modus operandi if you will. All the victims received an initial slash to the throat to instantly kill them, at which point the ripper would then stab and literally rip open the stomach of the woman. He would cut open the bodies of the woman with deep jagged cuts and take out their internal organs one by one. Picking and choosing which organs he wanted to take, and most of the time that organ would be the woman's uterus. Even though there had been many, many suspects in the Whitechapel murder cases, none of the suspects had conclusive evidence against them. And the Ripper? Well, he got away scot-free, with the blood of five innocent women on his hands. Not to mention an armful of organs. No one ever told Jack the Ripper to stop murdering innocent people. The murders just kind of stopped on their own. And Jack the Ripper's name was solidified onto history as one of the most famous and gruesome murders never to be caught. Number 6. Jack the Stripper Jack the Ripper's lesser known brother, Jack the Stripper? Well, not really. They're actually not related at all other than the fact that both these criminals targeted prostitutes and operated in London. His name originated from the fact that after he killed his victim, he would then strip them onto their birthday suit and leave them out to dry in the desolate night. This horrid creature would strangle his victims to death before throwing their lifeless corpse into either the River Thames or an abandoned alleyway. On every one of his victims, Jack the Stripper would smear paint spots onto his targets, as if to say, yes, I killed these women, and there's nothing you can do about it. Many believe he was both marking his victims and attempting to make a fool out of the London police. This particular murder operated within the years of 1964 to 1965 and had a total of six confirmed victims. That is, six that had his mark on them. But there were also a couple of unconfirmed victims that did not have his mark but killed and dumped in the same fashion. Even though multiple suspects were brought in for questioning, none of the suspects fit the picture of Jack the Stripper. So London police ended up closing the case as there was no solid clues for the investigators to move forward on almost synonymously with the Jack the Ripper killings. His protege, Jack the Stripper's murder spree, ceased on its own as well. And once again, the streets of London were safe for any and all to sell their bodies at whim. Number five, the Zodiac Killer. Ted Cruz, <clears throat> I mean, the Zodiac Killer was, as they say, an enigma wrapped in mystery. The Zodiac Killer claimed to have killed over 37 people in a series of anonymous letters, but only 7 of those victims were confirmed by police to be the work of the Zodiac Killer. One of the few killers on this list to name themselves, the killer dubbed himself the Zodiac Killer within the series of anonymous letters he sent to police. Within those letters, he sent 4 cryptograms, and only one of the 4 has been definitely solved. Unfortunately, that one has been solved, has no effect on the case, and netted no significant clues to help catch the killer. After almost every murder he committed, the killer would send an anonymous letter to the Bay Area press, as if mocking the investigation department and the media. In the final letter he sent, the killer wrote a tally out on the bottom. Me equals 37. SFPD equals 0. The 37 referring to the amount of people he supposedly murdered, and the SPD 0 referring to the inadequacy of the San Francisco Police Department. This heinous criminal would almost exclusively target younger people between the ages of 17 to 29, and each of them were either stabbed to death or shot multiple times in the head or back. This case has never been classified as a cold case, and has maintained an open case file ever since the first anonymous letter came in in the year of 1969. Number 4. The Stone Men In the streets of Calcutta, India, the Stone Men brutally murdered its victims. 
All of his victims were homeless and, strangely enough, asleep. The stone man was a coward, as he did not want to face his victims head on. Instead, he waited till the night fell, and only then did the stone man strike. The stone man was blamed for 13 murders over the course of six months, all spanning within the year of 1989. He massacred each victim in the same brutal fashion, by crushing their heads in one fell swoop with a stone that weighed upwards of 30 kilograms. And if you're in America and you use uh, the imperial system, that's 66 pounds. The victims were then found by pedestrians that were passing by, and the Mumbai police were promptly called. The victims' faces had been quite damaged by the time they were found. Many were completely unrecognizable. Because of this, many of the victims' actual identities were never found. This case had been left open ever since the first murder in 1989, and has been classified as an open case, accepting any and all new information regarding the brutal murder that is the Stone Man. In the seemingly same way as everyone on this top 10, the Stone Man abruptly stopped his murder spree all on his own, as if he just needed to get something out of his system by smashing someone's face in with a 66 pound rock. While in media he is referred as the Stone Man, it is not even confirmed whether or not this case was the handiwork of one individual or many. Many people like this are the reason why we can't have nice things, murdering completely innocent and objectively sad people for absolutely no reason. It's pretty disgusting. Number 3. Charlie Chopoff As his name implies, this killer chopped off certain body parts of his victims. What makes Charlie extra twisted is that he didn't just chop off any ordinary body part, he chopped off the pride of a man, his genitals. That's not disturbing enough, all of Charlie's victims were grade schoolers. Charlie only targeted young black children, making sure to inflict genital mutilation to each of them, as if to leave his mark and announce to the world which sicko was responsible. Charlie had a total of six victims, all spanning over a couple years. Out of his six victims, only five died, and each with their genitals mutilated. And yes, that does include the one that survived. Due to the fact that Charlie only went after black children, police confirmed that the murder was extremely racist. He wanted to stop these kids from growing up and having children of their own. A suspect, Erno Soto, was brought in to be questioned for these murders, but before he could be completely convicted as Charlie Chopoff, Soto was deemed unfit for trial and sent to a mental institute. But experts believe that Erno may have eluded confinement by feigning a mental disability. It was later found out that Soto had run away from the mental institute and now is on the run. Subsequently, the case is still open and police are still looking for clues on who exactly is it that killed five children and provided a very unwanted castration to the other. Number 2. The Monster of Florence The Monster of Florence was an Italian murderer that operated in the streets of Florence within the years of 1968 to 1965. The same patterns were used throughout each murder he committed, which in the end totaled 16. None of the murders were just those regular one-on-one -on -one murders, no siree. This monster wanted a challenge, he would only target young couples in love. The same caliber bullet was also used in all of the murders, adding to the suspicion that each was done by the same offender. Following his pattern, he would follow the couple, wait for them to get into their cars, and then once inside, he would shoot them dead from a distance. Next, he would cautiously move towards the car and just to make extra sure the couple was dead, he would stab them multiple times and remove the woman's pubic area and in some cases, remove her breasts. Several of the victims were shot dead whilst having sex in their vehicles, evidence which was used to thoroughly conclude the fact that the monster of Florence had a grudge against couples in love, so he killed them as they made love. Four men were found suspicious of these crimes and were each, in turn, thrown into jail. But were all later exonerated, as while each of them was incarcerated under charges of murder, another murder in the same fashion as that of the monster of Florence took place, which casted doubts on their guilt. The case of the Monster of Florence was classified as an open case, and the investigation to find out who's responsible is still ongoing. With that being said, in recent years the investigation has slowed down, and for the most part is pretty much over with. Number 1. The Cleveland Torso Murder the Cleveland Torso Murder, also referred to as the Mad Butcher of Kingsbury Run, is the most gruesome and villainous murder on this list. 
He dismembered and killed at least 12 people in Cleveland in the 1930s. The official kill count of the madman is 12, but recent research has shown that there may be as many as 20 previously unknown victims. While it is unknown how the torso murderer found or chose his victims, it seemed that he mainly focused on people of objectively lower caste, who were easy to find just by walking around in shanty towns. His victims were so gruesomely murdered that it was impossible for authorities to even figure out who they were. As such, only 3 out of the 12 people he murdered were recognizable after he was done with them. Depending on his mood, the torso murderer would either begin with decapitation for a quick death, or end it with a brutal torture session. Either way, he would never leave that bit out of the murder. It was both his MO and his staple, really. After killing the victim through decapitation, he would cut their bodies in half and mutilate the victim's genitals, ripping out the uterus for females and castrating the males. Oh, and he would keep the heads of his victims as souvenirs, with only 6 out of the 12 confirmed victims' heads recovered. One of which was found in a can. In some cases, the bodies of his victims was only found 2-3 to three days after the initial murder took place, but in others it took years for the body to be found, and at that point it's pretty much too late to identify them. There have been many suspects to this particular murder case, but none of them had legitimate evidence against them, and all of them were let go. The torso murder is assumed to be dead at this point in time, and the case has thus been closed.